The last thing I want to do is stir up any kind of fear for people about the state of the world, but we need to be willing to look at what's happening in a realistic viewpoint, square in the face, in order to prepare, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually, especially. Now, the good thing about the power drunk people who control nations is that they tend to admit their plans openly. One, because they think we're all too dumb and compromised to figure it out. And two, I think, because this is actually a spiritual war, ultimately, and they're required to tell us. But regarding their open admittance of their plans, we're going to go ahead and look at that document that was released 10 years ago, 2010, that openly states different scenarios that could feasibly lead to the technologically controlled world that they want to see become reality. They, in this case, are those behind the Rockefeller Foundation, which, by the way, is the same group that seated not only the United Nations, but as well the World Health Organization. That name sound familiar? Yeah, that same group who is right now responsible for advising governments, the same group who is helping shape the recommendations and rules that you, right now, are being forced to obey. The same group that Trump was apparently listening to when he signed an executive order on Friday, March the 13th. That essentially handed this country over to FEMA on a platter. That's another story. Let's get back to this document. This document is called... Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development. At the moment, it is available online. If you just put that phrase in along with PDF, you can download it. The stated purpose of the document was to explore the many ways in which technology and development could co-evolve. They claim in order to, quote, address a wide range of developmental challenges from climate change, healthcare, agriculture to housing, transportation, and education. Oh, is that all? <laughs> As an aside, when you understand that this organization's original founder, Rockefeller, also benefited most from the big oil monopoly that systematically destroyed not only environments, but as well other forms of healthcare that did not utilize their patented petrol-based pharma products, I do hope you can understand the irony of them now claiming they want to fix the healthcare and climate, but more on that later. The scenarios they present in this document would bring about what they understand to be the very important global, political, and economic alignment that they say will be for the good of us all. Well, Let's take a look and see if we, the people, agree with that. The first scenario they explore is called lockstep. You will find this on page 18 of this document. It elaborates much further on the scenario that they explore in order to know what the future might look and feel like, as they say. Now they describe this scenario in past tense, but do not be deceived. Remember, this was released in 2010. Here are some excerpts. Now the subtitle to the whole lockstep scenario that they describe says, a world of tighter top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership. Hmm, how does my compilation back that up so far? With limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. So understand that they know that the citizen pushback is what they will be instigating. They're very well aware of that. Remember, this was written in 2010. It says, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years finally hit. Unlike 2009's H1N1, it was extremely virulent and deadly. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. Now remember, why is it having an economic impact? Why is it from the virus itself? that we now know is on par with the seasonal influenza? Or is it because of the rules that very organization has imposed as a result of what they said needed to happen? It's a very important point. It says it had a deadly effect on economies. This is what they wanted. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, debilitating industries like tourism, breaking global supply chains. Food supply chains, anyone, perhaps? 
Even locally, normally bustling shops and office buildings sat empty for months, devoid of both employees and customers. It blanketed the planet, they say. Even in developed countries, containment was a challenge, right? That's how they want to portray it in the media that they also control. However, a few countries did far better, China in particular. The Chinese government quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders save millions of lives, they say, stopping the spread of the virus far earlier than in other countries. Says China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions from the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Are we seeing this? Yeah, absolutely. Even after the pandemic faded, y'all listen to this, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. Leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Again, this is what they want to see happen. At first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. Mm -hmm. Right here in America, I would agree. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy. Even eager for top-down direction and oversight and national leaders had more latitude to impose order in the ways they saw fit. In developed countries, this heightened oversight took many forms biometric ID for all citizens, for example, and tighter regulation of key industries. Keep your eye on the food, guys, because that's the one they really want to take down, in my opinion. Tighter regulation of key industries was deemed vital for national interests. Enforced cooperation with a suite of new regulations and agreements slowly but steadily restored both order and, importantly, economic growth. Remember, one of the main proponents of this whole thing that we're seeing speak out is Bill Gates. And what is he saying that we need to do before order and economic growth can come back, before we can go and hang out in groups again? What is he saying that we need to do? For the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. Do you see this biometric ID for citizens? And what is Bill Gates saying needs to happen in order for us to get that sort of thing? Not that any of us actually want it. It goes on to say, in the developed world, the presence of so many top-down rules and norms greatly inhibited entrepreneurial activity. Scientists and innovators were often told by governments what research lines to pursue. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Do they not want us to pursue the lines of research that would prove their entire narrative was based on lies? Research that would show the truth about this VIRUS? They're going to tell us what we can research. Scientists, wake up, speak out. It goes on to say later on, people seem to be growing weary of so much top-down control and letting leaders and authorities make choices for them. Wherever national interests clash with individual interests, there was conflict. Sporadic pushback became increasingly organized and coordinated as disaffected youth and people who had seen their status and opportunities slip away, largely in developing countries, incited civil unrest. Even those who liked the stability earlier on began to grow uncomfortable and constrained by so many tight rules and by the strictness of national boundaries, the feeling lingered that sooner or later, something would inevitably upset the neat order that the world's governments had worked so hard to establish. Well, I believe that in fact, this disorder that they are fully admitting is a part of the plan is what they will utilize to come in later and propose the ultimate order that they want to see. The citizen pushback is a part of this very title of this thing that they have created. They know this is going to happen and they are going to use this to their complete and total advantage. Some of the headlines in lopstep, it talks about quarantine restricts in-person contact. It also says intercontinental trade hit by pathogen controls. We're already seeing this in the media where they're saying that they're going to have to do that as a result of saving us from the infection rates, right? The infection rates that dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of virologists and people who have done microbiology their entire life are saying this is not even possible. 
It doesn't matter as long as people believe that it's possible. In the bottom, it talks about the technology in lockstep, and this is what they really want to bring in as a result of this disorder that they are causing by destroying our very ability to take care of ourselves through our small business. Technology in lockstep says, the scenarios point to the development of certain kinds of technologies. Technological innovation in lockstep is largely driven by government issues of national security of health and safety. So you can be sure that when they ask you to take an SHOT, it will be absolutely your duty as a matter of national security and health and safety of everyone around you. Just in the same reason that they have caused people to run around with masks for everyone else's safety. Otherwise, you're being a bad person and you need to be turned in by your neighbor, which is also what they are encouraging. Shaped by government's dual desire to control and monitor their citizens. It's all about control. Technology we might see. Scanners using advanced functional magnetic resonance imaging become the norm at airports and other public interests to get this guys detect abnormal behavior that might indicate antisocial intent. Even more importantly than understanding, and isn't it interesting that this is like a tidal wave, <laughs> a tidal wave that comes out of the heart of the zeros and ones that is a representative of technology itself. They don't, they make no bones about telling you exactly what they intend to do. 